Well, I guarantee you, wherever you are in the world right now, you're probably warmer than me. But here we are, ref, back again with another USA Away Day video, this time from Hamilton, Ontario. Absolutely massive match. It's one and two in the group. USA with a chance to jump Canada with a win. Canada's coming off a really big 2-0 away win in Honduras. USA last time out, they did the job at home to El Salvador. I'm absolutely buzzing for this. Let's get the three points. Let's have a fun day out. We're in Canada. Let's have it. Canada away, breakfast of champions. We got all your Canada necessities here. Tim Hortons donuts, Molson beer, a little ice action. You know, zoom in there. Beautiful, you know? It's cans, snow. It's Canada, baby. Anyways, I've never had a Tim Hortons before. Molson's, we'll see what it's like. So we're gonna do a little review. So here we go. Someone, someone open this for me. Someone do me a favor here. So I only got two hands. Here we go. Look, look at this. Okay, okay. So a lot of people been eating this already. Yeah, here. <laughs> I don't want to think about okay, that. We'll try a nice a glaze. Glaze, glaze is like the, you know, it's like the plain pizza, your cheese pizza. It's like I'm, I'm doing like a Dave Portnoy one bite. Everyone knows the rules here. So glaze donut. Let's see. Is it gonna be better than Duncan? I don't think so. Let's try it. Oh, it's. It's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it's meant to be served. But, yeah. I'm too. It's like ice. Um, you might get tell, nice donut, but Dunkin' Donuts clear, Krispy Kreme's clear, America always clear. Right. All right. Let's wash it down with a bit of Molson's Canadian beer, which might I add, I don't know if you probably can't find it over there, but the Canadians aren't even drinking this. They're drinking Bud Light. <laughs> So, I don't know what we think of that. So let's have it. Molson's Canadian. All right, 10 seconds. It's a watery bud. It's a watery Budweiser. It's a watery Budweiser. Right, we're here, Bastard American fan in Canada. Introduce yourself. All right, Vince, I'm from Eastern Shore, Virginia. Just enjoying the uh, beautiful weather here in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. I love the outfit, comes prepared. What motivates you to come all the way here to Canada with all these restrictions? Uh, good friends, good soccer, and uh, this is a must-see must game in a must-see environment because this isn't going to happen too often. Incredible game. We got all these, look at all these people out here, all these Canadians, man. It's going to be incredible. How do you think we're doing uh, in the qualifying so far? I think we're doing fine. Looks pretty good that we're going to qualify. You never know, but uh, keep getting points where we can get them, and uh, hopefully we'll be in Qatar. Inside the stadium, it's Canada away, and we got massive Canada fans here. Uh, what's the story, man? Where are you from? What, what's your name like? Yeah, my, my name is Eric. I, I'm from Niagara. I, I go to all the Canada games in Ontario for the most part, and uh, you know, I'm excited. This is my second Canada USA game. Last time we took it down 2 0. So, oh, he's yeah. he's th he thought he's bringing it up already. Nations League is bringing it up. All right, 1986, last World Cup. You're on really good trajectory. You should qualify now. What's changed? Like, what what in Canadian culture has changed? Why are you? How are you here? Top of the group. Yeah, I mean, I mean, 1986. I wasn't even alive back then. So, uh, th this is this is a big step for us. But uh, I think it starts with John Herdman right at the top, and uh, it goes down to the dual national recruitment that's been changing. You know, Scott Arfield, guys like that, kind of started it. We set the tone, and since then we've been able to get like guys like Yuki Ugo, uh, Stephen uh, Stephanie Stockio. And even like guys like Steven Vittoria, who like back when he was with, uh, I think he was with Braga for a while, we didn't think he would be able to make that commitment. So a lot of the dual Nats coming over has made a big difference. And uh, just overall, the culture change in Canada has been a, been a huge thing. You've talked a lot about the dual Nationals. Who is the biggest player for Canada now? I mean, Steven, Steven Ustakio is someone who's pretty unheralded. He's a baller, he's but, a baller like, yeah. In, in our midfield, he, he's core to our team, honestly. Like everything goes through Steven Ustakio. And uh, you know, that mustache is, 
Hey, he's a beautiful, he's beautiful, yeah, he's, he's, he's a, a beautiful man. He's a beautiful man. That yeah. move to Porto, I think it's just the beginning for him. So hopefully we get to get to see him run some minutes in. I know he's coming off of uh, COVID, and uh, I mean you, you can't not mention guys like Alfonso Davies and, and Tejon Buchanan. Ballers, just, you yeah, know, all of them. Just straight ballers that are that are moving up at the world stage, and so so yeah. I, I mean, I think I think we got more than one player though. <laughs>
first off, congratulations to Team Canada and the fans. All the best in guitar for you guys. As for the United States national team, it was another poor performance on the road. However, the USA remains in a healthy position to qualify, so let's continue to get behind the team. We will be back in March for the big one at Mexico and the final day decider in Costa Rica. So please like and subscribe to be the first to watch those videos when they are released.